some lawyer somewhere is like, they need to be notified that they're being recorded just for like legal purposes. Okay, you know, so you can hear the voice. The lawyer- No, it must have been a response to someone. Yeah. Right? Yeah. It's it's yeah. after the fact. It wasn't, I, I doubt it was because before. Goose, the, the man of many hats is like, yep, it's necessary. You gotta have it that way, so. By the way, Goose, good stuff. to see you again, buddy. You too, man. Been a while. Yeah. yeah. We gotta we gotta catch up. Uh, yes, we do. Love to hear about everything going on with you. Same. Not, yeah, we, last time we talked, it was just you were entering that role. So I'd love to hear what's, a, what's going on. It, it was literally almost a, exactly a year ago. So yeah. Um, yeah, man. Let's catch up. Yep. You guys haven't talked in a year? I guess not. I mean, it was really, quick, my, man. gosh. My year has been I, insanity. I, yeah. I, I don't want to make this like awkward for everybody else in the room, but like you, you guys are in the same space so much. Like we man, are you're just really stories learn from each other that's that's yeah. an incredible opportunity yeah, for sure all right now now that i've like totally laid guilt on the room and everybody's like <gasps> okay hey it's we're, we're excited to, to to be here and, and dig into it so last week we had a a metaverse summit through leadership network and there were um 1500 people registered for it we consistently had 500 viewers and leadership network has called it the one of the two best engaged uh, summits that they've ever done, like like the the energy, uh, the show up, e even the feedback afterwards has just been incredible. And 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 honestly, like I was uh, transparently, I was a little surprised, um, you know, because they, they were like, Jeff, what, what's your expectation? Walking into it, it's like, oh my gosh, if we get a hundred people to like sign up for this thing, like that'd be awesome. It's metaverse. It's crazy. It's so far out there. But what's interesting, as far out there as it is, there's there's a lot of people. Uh, that are that are interested in in doing it and exploring the space and, and we're doing other things through it but love you know working with dcn um and, and champion this and, and and helping you know even in, with digital church and and you know don't tell anybody but we also have metachurch.network as a domain name and at some point we're probably going to move from digital church network to to meta church just as metaverse becomes more prevalent right now i still get hate mail uh up with metaverse church as a matter of fact i could read you i could read you the the you know let's call it effigy to uh against metaverse church that somebody posted yesterday on youtube at me um the general what was it the general gist is that the metaverse is okay as long as we don't use it for telepathy and teleportation it's wrong if we use telepathy and teleportation for the metaverse, but it's okay if we use um, the code, software code 666. If we use the software code 666 to, to teleportation, then it's okay because that's what um, that's what the Ethiopian eunuch, that was what was used, the code 666 for that. I'm gonna go grab my tinfoil, I'll be right back. Dude, uh, <laughs> listen, I can't, like, and that's, that, that's I'm, I don't even know. <laughs> Normally, I'm like, I'll respond to anything. Like, I'll draw into a conversation. I'm, I'm reading this, and I'm like, is this guy being serious? Is this a joke? Like, I don't, I don't even understand what's happening right now. How do you? And so I'll, I'll, I'll come up with something in the next day or two. But it's like, it's there's, there's a lot of weirdness centered around. And by the way, if that person's on the call, I'm sorry. I'm not making fun of you. Like, <laughs> well, actually, I, am fun of you a bit, I don't know. Um, Hey, but we're, we're definitely excited uh, about the idea of Metaverse Church. And, and the heart, really, of this call is I want to help help people, help some of these planters that are interested in doing something, take practical steps. Like, I, I just, I'm not the guy, let's sit around for months theorizing, let's develop the plan, let's, let's get a whole bunch of people. Uh, to, to do Metaverse, you got to experience it. And if you experience it, you might as well get started. And because getting started doesn't have to be hard. Uh, and, and so, you know, into this conversation, I, I brought two or three people that have done three people that, that have done metaverse very well. And each of them have different backgrounds and contexts and, and different uh, different takes. But I think can all speak to the hey, let's get going. Let's just start exploring and, and see. And so. Uh, let me do this. Goose, I'm, I'm, I'm going different order on my screen. Goose is um, Michael Yus de Venice, who's the Metaverse pastor at uh, Cornerstone, Yuba City, Cornerstone VR. Uh, and so Goose may, maybe lives an hour away from me in Fort Lauderdale. 
Uh, but I never actually see him in physical space. We need to actually change that at some point. Um, Goose, me you want to take a minute and introduce yourself? Yeah. Uh, like, uh, like Jeff said, I'm Goose. That's what everybody calls me. Um, t- uh, attorney by trade. I uh, had my own law firm for about a decade and a half and then felt the call to ministry. Did physical church uh, for a few years and then um, discovered what was going on in the metaverse. Um, the other part of my background is I'm a, I'm a game developer. I'm a programmer and a game developer. And so ministry and game development, you know, really kind of perfectly merged in the metaverse. And so joined Cornerstone uh, a little over a year ago and I've been, I've been the metaverse pastor for Cornerstone. Uh, yeah, for, you know, again, about the last, uh, last year. Very cool. Yeah. Game developer. Um, he, your previous roles before was, was operations pastor. Was it, was it not? Really yeah. You uh, metaverse. Yeah. Uh, the finance, the facto legal department, um, and operations. Yeah. So a ma- man of many hats, but love, love him in the space. And he's been with Cornerstone. Well, I, I, I guess I just said a year. Uh, yep. in, in, in that conversation so yeah he's been doing it uh, about a year which makes him the resident expert uh we got john hazel in, in the room john is uh with one community church uh so i know the executive pastor over there uh decently well and, and uh somewhere back in february uh the executive pastor and I, I went to have a meeting to kind of bounce some ideas off him with some things and uh and so right off the bat when I jump on the Zoom call with him, he says, hey, Jeff, before we get to the stuff you want to talk about, I got a problem. Uh, the, the lead pastor of, of the church there, Conway Edwards, Conway Edwards just walked into a meeting and announced that we are going to launch a, a virtual reality church Easter Sunday. This was like eight weeks. Eight weeks, right, Goose? You, as, as you, do you remember? I don't even know Something. if it was eight weeks, but yeah, yeah it, it was, was tight. Six, six to eight weeks. He's <laughs> like, we need, to, we need to launch a virtual reality. My, my lead pastor just said we're doing it, so we got to do it. Six to eight weeks, what are we going to do? And, uh, and, and I, the, the first question that came, well, the first thing I said was, yeah, we can do that, no problem. By the way, has, has anyone in your church ever put on a VR headset? Nope, no exposure whatsoever, help. And, and so, yeah, we got, we got to be that guy to, to help them out. And John gets to be the guy that runs that now. And so uh, they, they did launch Easter Sunday and uh, man, they've been, they've been a good ever since. John, maybe you wanna just set up and tell your story a little bit? Yeah, sure. So my, I've been in ministry um, for like 10 years and uh, before I was an IT director and then I took a sales job and then I ended up coming here as digital experience lead. And so our lead pastor uh, texted me eight weeks prior to Easter and said, we're going to launch a metaverse campus on Easter. You can do it. And that was it. So I was like, all right, well, we'll figure this out. By the way, prior to that, he assigned to me to teach about Metaverse Church uh, at, a, at a leadership conference in January. So I had to borrow my friend's headset and get into the Metaverse and uh, get into the space and learn about it so that I could teach about it before I ever even launched a campus. So um, and then we, we did it. We got with Jeff and Goose. At that point, it was six weeks prior to Easter. Um, to get the the world built, and then um, we launch we soft launched the week before Easter. We launched, and um, every week we pivot. Every week we're changing up a bunch of things and iterating. But you know, getting started right away was it worked for us. Very cool. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, it's it's fake it till you make it. I mean, it's it's almost yep. in, in this metaverse world. Um, you know, I. I mean, I hate I hate to live life that way, but it's it's kind of like everything so new you can actually get away with that for a little bit. Uh, but then there's there's Pastor Brock. There's no faking this. Uh, and so, you know, where Goose is with an established church, uh, and and uh, you know, in Cornerstone, if you're not familiar with Cornerstone, it's maybe 150, 200 people in, in a physical campus in Northern California, literally the opposite side of the country from where Goose is. John is a predominantly African American church in Dallas, and it's a mega giga i mean it's five ten thousand plus a very large church um in in um dallas area pastor brock's coming at this from a completely different approach he's a um we call bivocational his nine to five jobs a hospital chaplain and and so like there's there's no funding there's no budget there's no uh organizational infrastructure you know helping what what pastor brock's doing 
Uh, but he told me, and, and, and it's funny, sometimes I feel like I make, people say, Jeff, you're making that up. And I was like, I really, I really don't think I made this that up. Pastor Brock has, has witnessed and shared Jesus with over 2000 people. Yeah. And that's a that's conservative. It's conservative number. Um, yeah. So I'm spending multiple hours a week. Um, you know, when I was, I was previously a parish pastor, I had more time to do it. Um, a little bit less now that I'm more bivo as a chaplain, but yeah, it's, it's, it's so, I love what you're saying there, Jeff, like we can get in, like, give me a half hour. I will get you set up. And in a half hour, you will be talking to people about Jesus. Like that's, it's eminently, you know, accessible. It's, it's eminently able to just get connected and do it. You know, so you, you, if you attended some like missionary conference about, you know, doing missions and, you know, uh, Southern India or something like that. It might take months to get, you know, the funding and everything set up, but like 30 minutes, I gotcha. You know, you'll be talking to uh, somebody dressed as a carrot <laughs> about the, the most important thing in existence. Um, so yeah, so my group, we have a community of about 400 people. Um, uh, it's called 4X Christian Fellowship. It's kind of a pan-Christian parachurch. We've got people from all different uh, denominations and uh, groups. So um, yeah, I've been doing this since uh, about three years this May. Yeah. So May is my, my three year mark. So yeah, awesome. that's me. Three, three years. And so Pastor Brock, you can find, we'll, we'll put all the links and stuff at some point. Uh, this may be, if we're watching this on demand, we'll put it in, in um, the comments of, of YouTube in here. Uh, to be honest, like I, I don't, with these round tables, I try not to structure a program. Like I, I really want to make this practical answer questions that 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 people may have um and so right off the bat are, are there any questions just kind of listening to these these three i tell you what let me ask one question just kind of open this up a, a little bit because each of you i i would say probably view maybe church a little differently in the in virtual reality uh and, and so maybe let's let's talk about that let's let's define what church looks like for each of us in in this in the virtual reality state, um, Goose, why don't you go first? Sure. <clears throat> um, yeah, I think we're still trying to figure it out. Um, it's it's very slippery trying to define what it is that that we're doing. Um, you know, Cornerstone, we've got uh, two campuses, if you if you will, uh, one in Alt Space, one in VR Chat. We're about to launch another one in Rec Room, and we treat them like campuses. So in one sense, it looks like a multi-site operation where um, the preacher preaches in the physical space and then comes into VR and preaches again. So it would be, almost be as if they were going around to different, like, you know, physical locations, different campuses and preaching at each one. So that's kind of what that looks like. We have a church body at each one. We have regular attenders at each one. We have our alt space people. We know when we go into alt space, there are people that come and they call that their church home. And Pastor Jason, my lead pastor, talks about the marks of the church, what actually constitutes a church. And we think that um, our alt space and VR chat, VR chat campuses exhibit those marks, even though we are not physically present with each other, it still exhibits the marks of a church. But we're, you know, we're, we're still discussing it. We're still chewing on it, still trying to figure out what that looks like, because every time we really try to lean into it as a church proper, we get hit with all of this missional, uh, you know, it just, just becomes more and more missional and it's just slippery. It, it, to me, it just feels slippery. Every time you try to grasp it as a church, it, you, you, you open your hand and it's like, no, this is missions. It's just missions. And then when you, when you grasp it only as missions, it's like, wait a minute, we've got seasoned Christians here who are looking for things like communion. And it's like, oh, wait a minute. And so we go back and forth in that way. And it's, it's an ongoing conversation. And now the, 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 the complexity that's being layered on top of that is what do we do as a hybrid model, which we are with a physical and uh, metaverse church is what do we do with people who we look at and say, you need an in-person expression? And how do we disciple them either to be both in the metaverse and not, or how do we disciple them out of the metaverse? I mean, there's some people who we genuinely look at and we say, this is not a healthy place for you. And so you really need to go. But then we're like, yeah, but we want to continue to disciple them. And so it's, we're, we're, we're still learning. We're, we're still very much learning on this. And, uh, and so I don't know that I've given a real clear explanation as to what we think it is. We're, we're, 
you know, that's, that's sort of the best, that's the working definition that we've got. Okay. <laughs> I mean, what, what, from a practical standpoint, you know, they're executing a service on, on a Sunday morning, uh, excuse me, Sunday evening. Afternoon. afternoon yeah. Um, for, for Eastern time. Yeah. Are you, are you doing, are you doing groups? Are you doing? Uh, yeah. You know, yeah. We've got, that? we've got life groups. Uh, we've got men's Bible studies. We've got one-on-one, one-on-two discipleship all happening in the metaverse. And so again, if you, if you take out the fact that we are not physically present with each other, we have everything that you would expect at a healthy church. And in fact, I would argue our discipleship is rocking and rolling. I mean, we, we, we are seeing disciples making disciples quicker in our context than we did in uh, really in the physical church. And there's a lot of reasons for that. We can get into it, but but, uh, at at any rate, uh, it's uh yeah so so it very much looks like all the things that you would see at a physical a physical only church yeah uh and so they've they've taken that approach what's interesting with them is they've also started multiplying um into other environments they've started in alt space uh which is honestly that's where i recommend all churches kind of start or at least exploring and then they've they've launched a vr chat they're launching a rec room and uh, and starting to kind of build out ministry in those different spaces. Uh, John, let talk to us a little bit of maybe what is, what is your church? And, and by the way, Goose is live preaching. Uh, and so whoever is actually teaching is in the room. Uh, John, you're, you're talk to us a little bit about yours and you're not, you're not live teaching your video stream in, right? Yeah. So we, tr- we launched actually trying to live stream in or bouncing between trying to live stream and trying to replay an on-demand service pretty much the whole service, half of it, um, we do the worship in one area and move to a different part of our world and then do the message there. And I just felt like the, the long form video stream wasn't working for us. So about three weeks in, um, we pivoted, we had a lot of technical difficulties in there, but on top of that, it just felt like people would come in they'd check out the world and then they'd leave. So I said, let's, let's do something that's going to engage people no matter when they pop into the world and so what we pivoted to was i have a team of um, 15 or 20 people on the metaverse team and they uh, i assign out five different people to get video clips from the last weekend sermon and then i have somebody who makes sure that these these clips are pretty consistent to portray the same message that our pastor was like the, the main thesis of the message And I have another person pick out a worship clip, 10 minute worship clip. And so what we do is the service starts at 10 a.m. CST on Sunday. We um, immediately put the worship clip up in the amphitheater and I invite everybody to join us in this virtual amphitheater. And then um, once that's over, we move into the main building and we start the first video clip. And then we have a table there that has a, a virtual microphone underneath it. So if you're standing around the table anyone in our world can hear you, um, which is a pretty uh, vulnerable position to put yourself in because anybody can be standing around that table and talking at any point. Um, But I have several, I have a lot of moderators, a lot of um, world builders who can immediately remove the microphone, stuff like that. And so we play a video clip and then we have a discussion about it for about 10 minutes. And then we play the next clip and whoever I assign to do the video clip, they also write two to three discussion questions. We do it all in a slideshow. So the video clip will play and then we put the discussion questions up so people can continue to reference them and we go through them. And uh, it's been amazing, the retention. So we'll, we'll have somebody jump in in the middle of the discussion and then they'll stay all the way till the end. This last weekend, uh, I was a guy who was an atheist. He came in at the beginning of service and uh, I just started talking to him. Hey, what do you love about alt space? What's your favorite world? Just having conversation. And he asked, okay, so what is this place? And I said, it's a church. He said, well, I'm an atheist, so I'm just going to check out your world and then leave. Um, but I told him, well, you're welcome to stay and hang out. And, um, you know, here's what we're going to be doing. And he was like, wow, thank you for being so welcoming. And so he stuck around and discussed with us the whole time, pitched into the discussion. It was really cool. Yeah, it's it's the 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 conversational approach works very well in in, in virtual reality, and uh, we're seeing, you know, it's funny. I, I encouraged the church at one point. I was like, hey, you know, 
you know clubhouse figure out how to do clubhouse like in the metaverse like give people that opportunity to to speak and and, and work through that more than just being lectured to allow that conversation to happen is so important pastor brock is is the best at this um because he's literally walking around and like talking with people and and so like the question uh and i know like you you can talk a little bit about because your your church approach is is more organic which is awesome so i'll unpack that but just even to explain how do you like meet people not in your building like what are you, are you just mm. walking up to random worlds random strangers starting yeah like, what, what does this actually look like how, how do people do this yeah no so um it's vr chat really i think i of all the different vr social platforms i think is the best for that piece of just kind of coming up and talking to people um getting a chance to, to interact with strangers um i found personally in in Alt space, you do have people like kind of describing, uh, I think it was Goose talking about, no, or it was John, I think talking about the, the individual kind of coming in and, and just being an atheist. You get some of those people kind of coming in, um, but in VR chat, you can just enter into like a digital restaurant. Just imagine like a restaurant, you know, like an Olive Garden or a bar or something like that. And you're entering into the space where people are having all these conversations and uh, you just walk up to a group of people. And uh, I found it, uh, helpful to just ask the question, what's the meaning of life? And that all of a sudden, you, you're entered now into more of a philosophical discussion without really, you know, uh, couching it as such, just the more of these matters of, of faith and, and the highest, most important questions of life all of a sudden start to start to be discussed. And, um, and there very naturally, there's a pivot to the highest of things in terms of God. So that's kind of how I do it. I just, um, just right off the bat, try to try to engage in kind of conversations about about these things. And, um, and, and the, the beauty of VR chat is you have those kind of groups huddled around, usually you're huddled around a mirror, because people like to see their, their, as the, the, their avatar moves in sync with their controllers and their head move and their head movements from their headset. And so there's a real sense that you are that person in the avatar and so people like to if you look into a mirror you get to see yourself and your movements in sync with this avatar um this this appearance that you've chosen for yourself and so people i think that's a a big draw of the virtual reality space people have negative body image negative uh you know images of the way they look and now they're able to make themselves look the way they want to but so you uh, a lot more could be said on that but but you, you'll go up to just a group uh in, in another world you gather around a mirror or gather doing whatever and and just asking a convert asking that question just um i found opens all sorts of doors hmm. love it well, like I said, we want to try to, and we'll, we'll drill in some, some practical steps maybe through here, but some of you that, that are, are, are doing this, do you, any questions, any, any, any thoughts here from y'all? Maybe what <clears throat> some of the, the audience that's in here, what, what level of understanding, um, what level of, of experience are, are you all doing in, in virtual reality? Where, where are you with that? I'm just here to learn metaverse 101 kind of thing. Um, basics with that very cool yeah Jay, yeah Jay, just, do you have any any, any experience, I have some experience. Kind of where you at this? well i had some experience we had a i was involved with saddleback and they did a mission trip where they um walked pastors through a mission trip at one of their purpose-driven conferences mm -hmm. um that was back in 2017 um so i had exposure to it and then i was involved with another um uh, and this is more of a VR type of a thing. Um, and it wasn't in, in the, the meta world, the metaverse and stuff. So the other thing was, it was walking with Jesus. It was a, um, this group had uh, created a documentary on walking with Jesus. So you were like with Jesus. And, um, and I don't remember the title of the film. And we'd invite people to come and then help them with their headsets and just getting comfortable with it was really interesting just to learn, you know, how people interact on the headsets. The headsets are still not quite there yet. And there's a lot of discomfort that people have with the headsets. And I don't, I don't have like an Oculus right now. I still have a, a Samsung and I haven't used it for a while, but just God brought in my heart when you had the summit, just to kind of explore this a little bit more um, and understand what's going on. Cause I'm, 
definitely into the technology and understanding how it affects it affects people, how we can interact. And um, it's super cool because I've, I've watched DJ's um, services online. DJ DeSoto has, uh, Soto. Yeah. Church, has, Soto has um, church online, uh, a virtual church. And I've been watching some of that. And, um, so just learning, um, not sure where God wants me to be able to help out. Um, I'm a content creator myself and stuff like that. So just kind of learning what's going on and how I can be of service. Awesome. Very, very exciting, Jay. Yeah. Looking forward to learning more about that. And, uh, which is, you know, even talking about like the, the straps of, of the headset, the best, the best thing I did, um, is I, I bought like, uh, an extended battery and the different headsets or different straps for the Oculus that they're, they're a little more plastic and rigid than the, the stretchy stuff. Um, and uh, like it, it for me that that made the Oculus Two just operate so much better. Uh, it stays in place. It's you know it's got the thing I can flip up and interact with the real world easy. Uh, my my lifespan on my packs longer than like seventy minutes because like just the headset itself is is really short. Um, but yeah, I've, I've loved uh, engaging in longer conversations and, and longer experiences now as a result of even having the external battery that's a part of it. And there, there, I mean, there are stuff like that's all over Amazon um, with, with that. Uh, Spencer, TJ, either of you guys around where you can talk, able to talk? That's cool. Uh, they're probably not in a position to that. That's fine. Um, well, you know, what I'd really, because uh, both here are, are, are novices and starting out, so maybe it's not even a formal church. Let's just start to maybe explore some of this meeting people, exploring spaces, having conversations, um, you know, I mean, in church planting world, we say, you know, finding your person of peace. I, I tell the story, if you're going to start a church in, I don't know why Paris, France just popped in my head, Paris, France, the flight from Dallas to Paris actually delayed me like um, an hour last night because they boarded first and then they had a problem with the plane and they couldn't leave and they didn't want to board us. And so that plane, it was just, it was a nightmare. So I'm not a big Paris fan right now, but if we wanted to plan to launch a church in Paris, France, we're going to, we're going to go to Paris. We're going to meet people. We're going to talk with them. We may not even share Jesus as much as, you know, past vision understands how the, the church operates or how that city operates and what the needs are. How, do, how have you done that? You know, John, Pastor Brock Goose, what how do you do that in like alt space vr how do you do that in vr chat how do you do that in some of these these virtual realms what what is what is learning about people what is learning about communities what is finding that person of peace what does that look like i can go first um it means just using the app living living with the people i mean that's where missions comes in i mean jeff what you're talking about is it's just that's just good missions 101 is you have to be able to know who it is that you are bringing the gospel to so you can contextualize it for um, whatever their barriers are. And, and, and we know that we're, when you go to a different place for, for, with missions, I mean, the, the gospel is always the same, but the contextualization is, is always different. And so it's, it, it's no different here. And certainly each platform has its own nuances, as Pastor Brock said, you're not going to you're going to have a different flavor of evangelism in alt space than you are in VR chat and in rec room or where, and wherever else you go. And certainly there's some commonalities or some questions that you will get asked everywhere, but, um, but then there are also some really, really stark differences. And so um, just, just getting in there and, and really, you know, using the app in the way that everyone else is using it will help get you comfortable with it, get you an understanding of, of who's in there. And then it really will help kind of see, I mean, as you, as you interact with people, again, this is just no different than anywhere else. I mean, once, once the technology, once you get used to the technology, that all just fades away and it's just souls. And it's, and it really, really does just become secondary where in your, in your mind's eye, you're, you're, you're seeing a person, you may be looking at a carrot or Paul Blart mall cop or whoever, but you, it, 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 the ridiculousness fades and it becomes a soul. And 
I know that this ha you know, this happened for me and there are, you know, I, all the platforms that we're in and I, you know, I do other places other than even just alt space and VR chat. I mean, I, there's, there's a few other, you know, there are games that I'll play and evangelize in there. Um, but there will just be, I believe there'll just be places that, that your heart starts to break for, like the Holy spirit will start to work on you and you will just say, Oh my goodness. Like it, it, there's just something different. And there's no, the only way to do it is to just get in there and talk with people. And it, and as pastor Brock knows, it's not hard. I mean, literally, I mean, there have been times where I have gone into VR chat, not looking to evangelize. I'm doing world building. I'm like, all right, hey, let me get in. Let me look at the world and get out. I'm built. I'm looking at the world. People will come in, say, Hey, what's, what are you doing in here? I'm like, yeah, we're building a church. Hey, can you, can you tell me about Jesus? Like <laughs> they're literally popping in, tapping you on the shoulder and saying, can you tell me about Jesus? Like that is the kind of stuff that happens in there. And it's not hyperbole, like that happens. So, um, so just being in there, it, it really is, uh, it, it's, it's a very rich, fertile soil for evangelism for sure. And so getting in there and just using the apps is, is really the first step. You know, I know you're a, you're a big pop one guy, uh, yes. which by the way, I tried that the other night. I'm not, I'm, that's, that's the Let's level go. of complexity. Like it, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I, I, I would not be the guy who would survive long in, in pop. One. Ho like, ho hopefully the teleportation guy doesn't find out that I'm doing a Bible study in pop one where we go and we shoot each other. And then I tell him about Jesus. Yeah, that, that, that there's, there's a lot of things that we don't want the teleportation guy to know. Okay, uh, John, uh, Pop One is the equip is the virtual reality equivalent of Fortnite, or um, I don't know what's as complex as, as Call mm -hmm. of Duty, but it, it's it's uh, you know a, 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 a shooter type. Uh, John, um, what is um, man? What what's your what's your approach to some of this? How have you? met people what what did that look like within your church are you pulling people from the physical church is it are you meeting people virtually like what 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 is some of this understanding the community meant for you over the past two months three months yeah well we're a very volunteer driven culture in our church we basically have about a third of the staff of most churches our size and so for me, it's all about people and building a team immediately. So it's been interesting to see who has decided to become a part of it. I just continually put it out there. Um, so I oversee all the digital experience, our web and app, our online service experience, as well as our true like online campus community, we call OCC Global. And so those are people that consider uh, one community their home church, and they can be anywhere uh, in the world. And so it's been cool to see some of those people say, Hey, I want to check, I want to check this thing out and see if it might be for me and suddenly feel more connected to the church than ever, because they feel like they're in a physical room with people. They've, they've described it as, you know, it's this amazing merge of physical and digital where, you know, it, it basically is teleportation. So, um, it's been cool actually for me to see that um, those people be encouraged and feel more involved, people that were already connected to the church. And it's giving them lots of things to do because there's, there's a lot of roles I have, you know, in our metaverse campus. So they're helping out with the tech side of it, of the slideshow and stuff. They're helping out with the discussion questions and facilitating and greeting people as they're coming in. And they're um, learning more about their own faith than ever before because people are asking them questions that they have to start to process through and talk through. So it's been so for me, it's it's uh, it's the people first. And then again, like Goose, the other first thing is just jumping in there um, and leading my people to do outreach, to go out into these like we have our world where we have church on Sunday morning. And I've told people what's cool about Metaverse Campus is like having church missions and outreach all at the same time it's like if, if at your physical church people just walked onto your parking lot and said hey what's what's going on here you know and wow your building is designed really cool can i check this thing out what other <laughs> what what's what's your tech like here and they're just interested in interested in what's happening there and then you get to share um the love of god with them so it's a it's a unique environment um and in addition to people coming to us 
I like to work with the team to go out. Um, so we've only, we did it pre-launch. We went out and started building relationships with people to invite them to our, and we would tell them, you know, we're launching campus on Easter and we would add them as friends in alt space and then invite them to church on Easter. Um, but now we got to work on our, our outreach week to week, just going out in the campfire um, and connecting with people. But getting started for me is, is building a team and then just jumping in. Yeah. I mean, you're two months in, so like, don't hear any guilt or implications here, but you're just hanging out in uh, alt VR at this point and kind of learning more about that space because it's new. You're not really exploring some of the other areas yet. Well, I am personally, um, I've started to, I mean, when I, back in January, I went to VR chat and checked that out. Um, and now I'm starting to look in Horizon Worlds and Rec Room and figure out what's going to be the next thing. Because Alt Space is, is a great place to start, but it's a small audience. Um, so we ultimately will move to a, a different platform, you know, in six to 12 months, probably. Yeah. And, um, and, and so it's, what's interesting, like if you're going to open a church in Paris, France, if you're going to open a church in Paris, Texas, if you're going to open a church in Paris, Florida, there is such a thing. And I don't know where another fourth would be on Paris, but if like all of those are going to be Paris, France and Paris, Texas are completely different. Uh, Paris, Florida is like a, like a retirement village. And, and so like the, uh, but the, the idea here is that there's different people uh, and there's different uh, characteristics they're looking for. In many ways, it's, it's kind of very similar to social media. Your Facebook audience is completely different than your TikTok audience, which is completely different than your Snapchat audience. And so what they're looking for, what their needs are, um, and how you communicate to them, how they receive communication. Uh, and so with, with uh, these different areas, the alt space, the rec room, uh, the VR, alt space is, is very, it's probably the one that's closest 18 to 85, broad range of people. It also has, it's Microsoft owned, so it's very strong parental controls. So you don't get a lot of crazy stuff happening probably like you would at some of the others. Um, Rec Room is based more off of video game VR, and so you're more likely to get a younger crowd, although there are some olders that are in there. Uh, I like to say you're more likely to get F-bombed by a, a middle schooler in Rec Room <laughs> than probably any other uh, space. Um, VR Chat is is the red light district. Uh, it's, it's the wild, wild west. There's no parental controls. There's who actually owns VR Chat? I, I can't think of it right now. <clears throat> I think it's I think it's privately owned. Um, it's, there may have been like a little bit of an acquisition somewhere, but it's not it's not like Google owns it or it's right. it's kind of third party. So it's yeah. it, there's or, no or, responsible organization maybe. that's held accountable. Right. For <laughs> yes. that space. Yeah. Um, you know, they're and, clearly and not actually, concerned about litigation as much as they no. should be, considering some of the, <laughs> the stuff lawyers cringing there. on the screen right now. Um, yeah. You know, actually, uh, Pastor Brock, I'd love your take. Uh, you know, I, and I've heard uh, Stuart from Cornerstone, just met him physically this past week and uh, did some stuff with him. And, and he was taught, he said he feels like 50% of, of VR chat is having virtual sex. Do you think that's a reasonable number? I, so I, that's what I've heard. Like, obviously, I can't speak from firsthand experience. Um, that's what I'm told. I'm not part of that culture. Like I'm going into obviously going into kind of more public spaces. Yeah, that. right. I know. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and um, so I can't really speak to how much I've heard. So I heard one, someone say as much as 50% of users are in private spaces and that would, that would lead itself to that inclination. One of the things that, and it's almost like VR chats trying like intentionally marketing itself. Like the last major update was yeah. about like being able to interact with other people's avatars and stuff like that. It's almost like they 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 are are gunning for that. So, yeah, yeah. but that's exactly where we need to be, right? Yeah, like, yeah. I mean, Jesus went to the prostitutes and the tax collectors, <laughs> and 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 these are the people. And here's the reality: like, you know, we are hardwired in our conscience to know this stuff is not good. Right. And I think that a lot of the hostility um, that I find are people that just representing Christ is a representation of that. This is, you know, it's, it's just to say that this is not good. It's not, it's to, it's to, um, it's to, I won't use the right word here. Not, I wouldn't say reject, but it's, it's to, it's to reject that kind of, that kind of worldview. 
Um, and so, but, but coming with that, you get the hostility, but you also got people that know they need to be forgiven and the forgiveness and love of Jesus is just of insurmountable, of just inexpressible comfort, just, just profound comfort to, to speak of, of first John. That if we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God was faithful and just will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I think there's just so many people that need recognize that they just need a wash and, and, and a start over. And I think, um, I think that's precisely why VR chat they are, there's so many people that are so interested in it. Um, when you start having these conversations, it's very common. You get two or three people talking, then five and six people are kind of gathered around listening. You know, I've had times where 20, 30 people are just all there. The entire room is listening between conversation with me and another person. And uh, people are interested. They want to have these conversations because they never get to have them in real life because it's too dangerous. It's too dangerous. I was just, uh, I was just with a woman in the hospital her mother was in the hospital and she, you could tell she wanted to talk about her faith more, but she, or her lack thereof, but she was concerned that she might offend me. Like you, she said as much. And so the, the conversation in person was very strange, but there's not that risk in, in the metaverse, right? Because if somehow I offend you terribly or you offend me terribly, like click, click, we're, we're in another world instantaneously. And so there's just not that risk that things are going to get awkward. And so consequently, you can have really deep, rich conversations that you wouldn't in, in real life. How, Pat, Pastor Brock, how, I mean, you're saying people are receptive. When's the last time you got yelled at in, in metaverse? What's the today? Percent, maybe a percentage. <laughs> today, <is better>. yeah. <laughs> but what, what's today. the percentage of, of like, you know, through you, versus genuine conversations very re receptive yeah so i would say maybe as much as 40 percent of people just don't care i i might say as much as 40 percent are interested and then maybe let's say split the last 20 you know gung-ho amazingly interested and then that, let's say the last 10 percent is super toxic and just wants to so, so maybe somewhere between 10 to 20% are, are hostile, are openly yeah. hostile to what you're talking about. Yeah. That was really bad math, but we're going to pretend everything. Did I, did I, did I do the math? Yeah, I, it was, I, it was I got four funny. kids. I got four kids right now. So you can leave me are, alone on the math. Sure? This, is why I, this is why I'm a hospital realize. chaplain, not an RN. I always tell our nurses <laughs> at the hospital, you don't want me doing math, especially in my head, but whatever, whatever, let's say, let's say 10%, whatever the rest of the math is 10%. Sure. They're openly hostile. Yeah, we, 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 we got you covered. That, that's great. Thank you. Thank you for your uh, grace. See, we need the grace here. <laughs> Man, look at me. I'm being, being a jerk on this thing. Like <laughs> Never joke. Right. Never. Um, yeah. So, uh, I mean, other than, I mean, let me ask this question because you got some newbies in, in the space. It feels like a, a little bit here. Uh, actually, Stacey, you got a question. Why don't you go ahead? Oh, oh. You're muted. Yeah, I wanted to lower my hand because I forget like my hands in the air or the reactions in, in like in, in the corner. Um, I have a question for John. You're talking about, you know, volunteers. Is there some sort of like um, training or something that you do for that? Cause I don't, or anyone, if anyone has anything like that, I mean, like it's, it's even a challenge just doing it not in that place. So <laughs> like, you know, in person, even, you know, um, uh, is there some sort of like a, Hey, check this boxes agreements. Uh, this is the agreements basics. How to how to just be in that space? Personalities. Oh, someone yelled at me. Like that's normal, right? So that's okay. But yeah, because you're not just representing yourself anymore, really. Um, yes, you're representing yourself, and you're a Christian. But now you are with your church. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a great question. Uh, no, not yet, because, you know, we're moving fast and iterating fast. So, but I have some, I'm a perfectionist. And so, you know, if it were up to me, we, we would probably never launch. That's the problem. So, because I'll be always trying to prepare and make it perfect before I'm ready to launch. And then too many irons in the fire at any given time. So it's best to just jump in. Um, and so I now have a team member who is really, I can tell that he's passionate about it because he keeps asking me like, 
what would it look like to put together, you know, standard operating procedures and, you know, like give people an easy on ramping. And so I'm like, okay, you're going to do it. <laughs> so as soon as you have the right people in place, um, you start working on those things. And then I'll do, we haven't done it yet, but um, the weekly meeting is really key for us in our culture. And so every Thursday night, we have a digital experience meeting. And so everybody on my team gets on that Zoom call. And then I do breakout rooms for each team. So I have the web and the metaverse. And in the metaverse campus, we're, do, we're covering different things. We're making sure the weekend is covered. Um, but one of the things we will start doing is having those trainings. So I'll pop in there every once in a while and do that training. Like, what do you do when you encounter this, you know, a troll? Um, and like, what's the difference between uh, somebody who's there intentionally in a troll and just wants to verbally abuse and harass versus somebody who's hurting um, versus somebody who just wants attention? What are the difference between those things? Uh, we heard a story this week of somebody who, jumped up, you know, sometimes these things don't work the way they're supposed to, but our stages are supposed to be blocked where only hosts can jump on them. Uh, but in, in uh, Pastor Goose's church, somebody hopped up on the stage and was just dancing and trying to get some attention. Um, and everybody's looking like, what are y'all going to do? And uh, then he ended up just hopping down and sitting next to their lead pastor, Pastor J. Poe, and just watching the rest of the service. And then I think, did he end up getting saved or or just stayed for the whole service? You're, it, it wasn't, you're the wrong church. It's okay. It wasn't Goose's church. It was uh, Church on the Rock. And, and yeah, he did. He got saved. Tommy, oh. Tommy was one of the right. that story. Okay, but, yeah, uh, sorry. I'm sure Goose has got a similar story because I tend to hear that story a lot. The guy that's grinding on stage in the middle of a service. Thanks, thanks John. That's, that's I, yeah. And I totally understand. You're like, you keep moving. If we, if, yeah, you never get started. You got to just start and frame as you go. <laughs> right. You're still learning, continue learning. So I appreciate that. Thanks. The other question I have is for Goose, and maybe it's more on the, so that's kind of the top of my head a little bit is, you know, um, I don't know how laws are, you know, and unlawful harassment and things like that. I have my background is 16 years of. HR. So I'm thinking labor oh, laws and things, not labor laws, but you know, just I'm, yeah, yeah. harassment and, and in light of recent events coming to the surface of social media, like high things, you know, with the SBC and yep. actually in my own denomination, there's stuff going on Foursquare. And so, um, yeah, just kind of seeing how are, you know, are there things in place <laughs> to sign off on, you know, when you have volunteers? <laughs> yeah. Um, not right now we are working on it and you know my lawyer the lawyer side of me is just like i can't believe the way we're we're, we're operating <laughs> we're just never in a million years do this in right. a, in the physical church mm -hmm. um but there's a, there's some of it we don't really have a choice some of it we are putting the brakes on because the relation it all has it all just developed so quickly as pa pastor brock said the authenticity that comes from the metaverse allows relationships to develop far more quickly. Yeah. Um, and the anonymity doesn't always give us um, the, the, like the information that we need. Yeah. And so we, you know, right. there are supposed to be nobody on any of these social platforms under 13. That's because of COPA, um, right? the Child Online Protection Act, right? Mm -hmm. So, but they're there. Mm -hmm. And so it's, it's not, a, it's not uncommon for sure. us to be in a conversation and, you know, the kid's like, yeah, I'm in sixth grade. And it's like, okay, time out. <laughs> like, this is just, you know, like <laughs> all of a sudden it's like, okay, this is a group discussion. Like, and so we're working through our policies as best we can. Um, the getting somebody to sign something as a volunteer. I mean, we don't even know some of their first names. Forget right. about signing a document. Yeah. So the great question, we've been asking them, I'm working on it as best I can. I'm, and, and mainly there's two parts to this. One, we want to protect the vulnerable populations and it's not just kids. There are adults, young adults who have, um, who have like uh, mental illness, right. um, a lot of it, there are vulnerable people in the metaverse mm -hmm. and we want to do everything that we can to protect them. I also want to protect my people. I want to protect my team because yeah. all it takes is one false accusation of mm -hmm. somebody that says they said right. this or they did this. 
and it's a nightmare. And so there's 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 both of those right now. What basically the only thing that I that I've basically said right now is, first of all, get as much demographic information as you possibly can, and if if we know that someone we're interacting with is a minor, there's no one-on-one -on -one conversations like yeah. that. Yeah. Just 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 put a stop to that until we figure out how else to deal with this properly because mm -hmm. ideally we would get parental involvement you know like yeah, a 16 right. year old kid comes in accepts christ we want to disciple them mm -hmm. and it's like great can i you know and it's like hey great can i talk to your mom dad grandparents whatever <laughs> and they're like no no no, that's not happening mm -hmm. so right. it's like man what do we do yeah. here so right. um great question we're digging into okay. it i, I sure. the more the more voices we get in uh, the mm -hmm. better on this, that, that we can think deeply uh, in this and just, I don't know, be as careful as we can. Yeah. Yeah. I was curious too about, about that. And then also in my work, I, we're really cautious or conscientious conscience <laughs> of, of in, in a binary gender world, we are conscious of our interactions with people of the opposite gender. Yeah. Um, now, because it's not always that way, a lot of times it is fluid, right? Someone who identifies differently than their anatomy. And so we just kind of, in my chaplaincy work, you know, we just kind of, we kind of just really handle with care. Um, but in virtual, it could be anything in any, like it, there is no clear representation of gender. And I, I think yeah. that's where the two seems to play well, um, where you bring two along that, that can handle the situation where there's mm -hmm. uh, accountability, where there's another set of eyes, where it's, mm -hmm. it's yeah, you know, it, yeah. There's less um, he said, she said, or he said, he said, now there's he said, he said, he said, or and there, just, they, said. Mm -hmm. they said, right, mm -hmm. um, yeah. you know, and mm -hmm. I, that that seems to be and the more that that I floated and I think Goose is actually the first person I heard say that I was like, oh, that's really good. And the more that I floated around the people who were kind of asking those same questions, they were like, oh, yeah, I think that actually would solve a lot of it. Now, there's probably other things that we still need to address, but that's mm -hmm. that's a at least the 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 multiple approach seems to be the band aid to, yeah. to solve the urgency. Of Great. The problem. Thank so, you. Jeff, I'm formally requesting a uh, a VR uh, legal summit, which Goose uh, can lead. You know, uh, I I would love to hear more about about these pieces. Well, I mean, you're you're uh, you're not probably far from the truth. Um, I'm actually doing a mental health thing here in uh, in June, um, up in Denver, and uh, maybe Goose and I we do need to get together and try to get some some legal brains together and, mm -hmm. and work through this. So, yeah, we'll figure that out. That that'll be fun. Uh, and, and I'll just be honest in that whole legal piece. I'm, I'm working so far out of my league, man. I I don't I don't I don't know and understand any of that so uh, but yeah i think thank you thank you both for your input thank you what are uh, any other questions um at, at this point um feel free to throw them in chat if or, or we'll just we'll keep talking oh one um, one th one forward. thing to to address the he said she said he said he said um one the way that i do it is i live stream literally all my interactions so every interaction that i have evangelizing is available on demand on twitch so um that's a way of of uh you know of documenting oh that. that's legit yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. Do, do you tell people yeah. you're you're live streaming or yeah i, I guess, I guess I, well it's within the platform I, right i don't i ever this is something i've struggled with this is something i've struggled with um I don't um, always disclose right off the bat that I'm streaming. I don't, and maybe I should, um, but that's something I've struggled with because I don't, because yeah. I think you get a, you get different responses that way. Um, yeah. But I don't know. I don't, I, maybe, maybe I should be more uh, upfront about that, but I'm, I'm such a small streamer. I usually only have like, you know, less than 10. So it's not like, they're being broadcast to the world. I'm not some like mega streamer with a, with ten thousand people watching. I think, I think that would be a you little know, bit more deceptive. But there's no you are being recorded. You know. Yeah, like, there's no you are being recorded. That's right. I know. I know. I know. But I'm not recording individuals. I'm recording usernames and avatars. So that's what makes me feel a little bit better. I mean, 
I don't know. I'd love to get some input maybe from the group on whether I should. That's a great idea, though. I disclose like, live stream everything. Yeah. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. The um, e even for the ability for people to see how you're doing it and, and to watch it from a modeling purpose, like not unsaved people, lost people watching the streams, but Christians understanding how you're having these conversations and what it looks like so that they could do something similar. You know, I think streaming is interesting if we targeted towards this, like even within the, the chat here, we, we've talked about, hey, how can we go see these church services? And, and, and there's, you know, different ways. And we'll, we'll arrange something through DCN where we'll, we'll, we'll go do like a, a virtual church tour or something here in the next couple of weeks. But uh, I even... You know, I think seeing how you're having those conversations and what that looks like could even be a, a training resource to help others start to, to do something similar and, and, and to be more comfortable um, sharing or to learn how to share in, in that space. Um, anyway. I'd like to consider this. I, I, I'm not in the metaverse, and but I equip and activate people in their missional space. And so I have a feeling I'm going to be doing that with people. Um, and I, yeah, I know it's just jump in kind of thing, but here they're part of our church and I'm equipping them with tools and conversations and questions and, you know, person of peace and all these things. But if I'm not in there and I don't know what's going on necessarily, and I don't have to be right. Cause I'm not in everyone else's na physical neighborhoods either, but I'm wondering what that, you know, what is, I don't know, maybe just maybe say, Hey, you need to go join these other churches. <laughs> like I'm sending you to another church to be, to continue the support care of yeah. community in that missional space. It's, you're not totally off. We, the, the metaverse, as far as I, my experience, it is a very ecumenical space. Um, yeah, there. I mean, a, we have lots of discussions with, and maybe it's because it's still relatively small, though it's growing rapidly in terms of the number mm -hmm. of churches in there. But in terms of communicating across, you know, all of the various churches, um, working with each other, even to the point of, you know, not necessarily stepping on each other's toes as, tar as far as like time slots go, um, it's a very ecumenical space. And so, um, yeah, definitely, if you've got, I mean, if, if pra very practically speaking, if you've got people that want to go and evangelize um, or want to like even just come into the space and just see what it's like, any one of us on this call, I guarantee you would be happy to let somebody shadow. I, I can just speak for myself. They can come, they can come to our dream team meetings, see how we do our volunteer meetings. They can see how we do our services. They want to participate. I mean, we've got the room for that. And then, and, and we're happy to do it. I'm happy. We, we are happy to pour into more people. Our, one of our key phrases or one of our key phrases, one of our key pieces of scripture is the harvest is plenty and the workers are few. Mm -hmm. And we just sit here and say, man, there are so many things we would love to do. And the, the barrier is not money. The barrier is people. Yeah. And so um, we, are, we are very, and Pastor Jason, my lead pastor, is, is very vocal about this, about how we want to help other churches any way that we can. And mm -hmm. so, um, I mean, I can, and again, I, I think, John and, and, and Pastor Brock would, would agree, but, um, I, and I think even the other churches that, that aren't on here, I know that some of the other guys we've talked about, I know they would say the same thing. It's a very ecumenical space. It's a lot of fun. Yeah, like it's yeah, a lot yeah. of fun, like linking arms with other churches and, and like mm -hmm. high-fiving each other um, and not thinking like, oh no, there's another church on the corner and seeing them as competition is none of that. It's mm -hmm. awesome. A oh, perfect example of this is Thank Alice. You. Do you Thank guys you. all know the story? Oh, sorry. I didn't cut it. So, you know, sorry, just saying thank you. I appreciate yeah. the offer and I'll Absolutely. keep that in mind. Thank you. Yeah. yeah tell so, the story of Alice. Yeah. Go so back. Alice, um, I don't know. I would be interested to know who, who she connected with first. But um, when I first met her, her Twitch name was Satan Sexy Slut. And then she changed her name to Future Queen of Hell. She was a Satanist, like 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 a Satanist, like really a Satanist. Um, <laughs> And uh, just, you know, had conversations um, over many months. And she's now a member of uh, Cornerstone. Um, she's in, uh, was it Cornwall or Plymouth? Some, some, something in the Western, Western England, Southwest England. Um, and so here's a woman that, you know, 
never probably would have been connected with Christianity apart. And she, she, the reason I bring it up now is she's connected with each of our, a lot of our ministries. I know she talked with DJ and myself and JPO and Goose and, and, um, oh, Nicole, Nicole was a big part Nicole of, was huge. Yeah. Huge, huge uh, part of, of Alice's. Yeah. So, so yeah, I just want to, to, to affirm that, you know, there is kind of a, and, and, and really, I think I want to really credit DJ for starting that. Yeah. You know, because to my knowledge, his interaction with me was the first time that two separate VR ministries ever connected with one another. Um, and the first day I, I just knew, saw his world when one day I was look, searching in VR chat for church, but just the word church, maybe looking for a space to stay and, and do our service. And then, uh, I found VR church. This is very strange. And so I joined his service um, one day and five minutes in, he's like, you need to come preach. You need to come here. Like you're, <laughs> this, we're so excited to have you. And like, you know, you would have expected a lot of people would have been, you know, like, oh yeah, we'll, 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 we'll help you if you ask us, if you grovel sufficiently. But like, he was just so excited. I think the theme verse for VR ministry is the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Like I, I've yeah. said that so many, so many times. Like that is, I'm, I am, I'm formally declaring that the official theme verse of Metaverse Ministry because we need more, yeah. we need more people. And if you've got 30 minutes, we can do it right now. Um, I'll get you set up, and you can be talking to people <laughs> about Jesus. Um, challenge, formal challenge to all of you. <laughs> that's good. Thank I mean, you. That, that's spot on. Good. Uh, Stuart just wrote a blog on um, on the Church Digital. Stuart from Lakeland Church. VR. Uh, basically, the gist was, yeah, we want to see the church work together, look at it in the metaverse. And the stuff that they're able to do in the metaverse collaboratively um, that the physical church just is not doing is, is night and day. And, uh, and I, I, I kind of equate it to it's like crazies are more powerful when they're crazy together. Uh, mm -hmm. An individual crazy person is discarded. Multiple crazy people you have to actually keep an eye on. And uh, it's exciting <laughs> to me to see kind of like all these these organizations any like just as as completely even within the zoom call you've you've got brock you got goose and you, you got john who all have three completely different views and aspects of church and, the, and from the theology to the operations to the organizational structure to their, their leadership and the resourcing and everything in between um Probably and, the entire uh, spectrum, really, of Christianity yeah. at this point, you know. Uh, yeah, pretty much, and and it's and it's operating, you know, in that space. Um, you know, the guy that wants to teleport, maybe that's a whole other spectrum that we're not ready for. But um, yeah, that's. You know, yeah, you've mentioned know. that at several times just in this today. Yeah. Are you are oh, you it, paranoid? It made, made, What's going on there? <laughs> no, you weren't here for the beginning. I I got a. I, somebody wrote me a thesis on uh, oh no uh, yeah, i on, did i heard that it's oh, just that it, one? it yeah, just, sounds like it impacted you greatly so it, yeah no, it's, 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 that's a chaplain thing. question i love it stacy yeah. yes i am i just started actually in a workplace chaplain yeah. like yeah. oh really cool weeks ago cool. yeah 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 it's a what do they call it? a workplace chaplain employment agency that's, that's cpe that's cpe <laughs> stuff right so. there i love it yeah <laughs> takes on the no one asking how many churches are in the metaverse um you know, you care to take a shot? I can say that, um, I mean, just as, sort of anecdotally, um, even as even as recently as maybe January or February, um, we saw maybe three or four services on a Sunday. I think we're probably 20 plus on a Sunday now. In, and that's in alt space. VR chat, there's more coming in we just met another guy who's about to launch in vr chat with a very impressive world um it's uh yeah I, I mean we're we used to know pretty much everybody in the space and now we don't like it's yeah. right i mean yeah, I right know. yeah right. yeah yeah there's um i and i can tell you even what's not showing up uh there's a lot of churches experimenting there's a lot of churches exploring Oh yeah. Um, you know, and it was talking about, we did a summit Latin J you were there for the summit last week. You know, we had uh, this leadership network asked me two months before when we started planning it. Hey Jeff, so what's your expectation? Like how many people, I may have even said that on this call. I was like, listen, if I can get a hundred people to register, to actually show up for an online conference about metaverse church, a hundred people to register, like that would be a huge win. Like that would be incredible. 1500 people registered for that thing. 
there were there was and I'm not gonna tell you the name of the church. Actually, Goose, it's in your backyard. Uh, there's there's a pastor that I've been trying to get time with for years. Got a lot of friends on the staff, and this lead pastor has blown me off since like 2018. And um, and he showed up for the he was actually there um, for at least some of it uh, for the for the conference. Uh, he registered and showed up for it. Uh, and so like there's there's just there's more energy and excitement in that area. You know, um, Facebook met uh, Facebook met up that announcement in November, December. Life Church announcing they were in, heading into the space. Life Church gave permission for a lot of churches to to explore it. I saw my traffic jump up maybe five or ten times, five hundred percent, maybe five hundred percent on um, as for people searching for Metaverse Church after Life Church did their announcement. The funny thing, I was in jury duty and was like unable to interact with anything for like that week. It was the worst timing ever for anything, but um, it, it still worked out well. So, um, what other? What? What's, oh man, we we already went over. This is this has been fun. I kind of got sucked into the conversation. Well, hey, before before we wrap up here, um, here's here's the takeaways. What I'm hearing. Uh, I, I, and actually, this couples with some of the stuff, even with the, the, uh, some other things through Leadership Network. I, I, I'm going to work with some of the pastors uh, that are represented here, and, and maybe we'll do like a guided tour. Hey, let's go crash a church service. Hey, let's go do something. Hey, let's, you know, and start to really like take a group, a hosted group together to maybe see some of these virtual reality experiences. Um, and, and so we'll do, a, we'll do a virtual reality church field trip. That'll be fun, road trip. And then, um, I don't, was there any? Was there another takeaway or something? I felt like that was probably the big one that came from this. Um, is there any? Before we wrap up, is there any any last questions? A anything that that we can help you all with today? Awesome. Well, I hope this has been helpful. I mean, uh, this is the start of the conversation. Hopefully, the win for all of you is. Uh, it's funny, I just got an email from Ian Kirk, who announced publicly he's doing a virtual reality church. Uh, he's planting. He was going to do a digital church, but he's going metaverse with it. And it's just another guy. Um, the Go ahead, John. Talk to me. Um, yeah, I just want to say, just so you all know, I'm. Um, sometimes I feel guilty for this, but I just realized we all have different callings. But Pastor Brock and Goose are like VR natives. I'm like... I'm in VR basically just Sunday morning. And the main other reason I get in VR is actually to mind map in an app called Noda, which I love <clears throat> to just brainstorm and stuff. So um, I've had to kind of reconcile that like, I'm not going to become a native here. Um, and so it's more about like, just we're sowing seeds. So like together, because people hop around in worlds so much, there's a high probability that people are going to hop into our world and then hop into Goose's world and then Pastor Brock. So, you know, I know that like we're just sowing seeds and, um, and it's, you know, it's a low barrier of entry. So there's no reason to be intimidated. It's just jump in. And what's cool is the ministry that it's then doing for our church, for people who actually have already been members and they're getting to have roles that they didn't have before. And so you don't have to be an expert. You don't have to be someone who's immersed in, VR gaming or metaverse, you can just jump in and do it. That's a great point, John. Um, to, to, and Stacy, you mentioned volunteers. The best volunteers that you will get for this are good, empathetic listeners. I mean, that it, it's not gamers, it's not high tech people, it's not any of that. It's just get emp if they if they can handle being inside of a headset and they're an empathetic listener, a plus volunteer for the metaverse. Yeah, I think that's yeah, absolutely on that goose. There's so much pain. There's so much hurt. There's so much, so much trauma. Um, I think a lot of the agoraphobia, I think there's a whole bunch of people that suffer from agoraphobia and this is their way of having a social outlet, out, outlet without, you know, having the risk of, of personal face-to-face -face interaction and, um, and they need compassion, you know, and uh, Jesus always, always, sought out the, the fringes of society. And I think you'll find a whole lot of them in, in the virtual reality space. Amen. Hmm. We'll Do you guys have like a, I don't know, and this is something that Pastor Brock is familiar with, you know, bumping up to the next level of care. Mm. <laughs> mm. Um, 
you know, that's something I think about even within our church, you know, our little micro church network model is like, are we equipped? Do we have our list of allies and resources and mm. people who are in that space? Like not necessarily in the VR space, but yeah. You know, if Stop uh, reading my email, Stacy. Oh. Um what? we're 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 rolling some stuff out in the fall. Okay. Uh, so that's all said. because I do that in person. Well, you yeah, were talking work. more about like therapists and say, psychiatrists, yes. that kind of stuff. Stacey? Yeah. Uh huh. Uh huh. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. More I deep, would... or even like soul care, deeper mm. healing, prayer ministries. All mm. I mean, so it's it's this vast because there's people that are already you know being discipled and all those things, but yet there's some undealt with hurts that are coming to the surface that you're mm. like, okay, you know. Pastor yeah. Brock, yeah. have you done much in that space? I have to confess, Stacy's bringing up something that really needs to be addressed. Um, so I have, I've done some bumping up in terms of like the, you know, the national suicide hotline, yeah, that yeah. kind of stuff. But yeah. I would love to see like two one one. Every state has a two one one, right? Yeah. And so that yeah. kind of stuff. But that's very so, general. Yeah, Here, I'd love here's to some see. of the stuff that. That, I'm, that I'm, I'm working on because Sorry. I've actually okay. no, it's it's, it's beautiful, and, and this is a part of a of a a larger conversation. Um, mental health and, uh, and and soul care in, in the metaverse has been something that I'm I'm making a big deal, and and so I'm actually running a think tank on it um, in June, and working with a number of Christian recovery organizations, mental health organizations, inside and outside of the church. Uh, soul care as well. Um, and, and so I'm seeing, um, once again, uh, this is completely behind the curtain, but this is kind of the, the theory right now. Uh, I'm seeing three different opportunities. One, and, and so like soul care, self care, the ability to provide resources for, for pastors, for planters, for individuals, for normal people, um, soul care, self care with that. Number two, I feel like we are not, um, we are not trained on how to treat, handle, and address mental health issues in general, but definitely in the metaverse. And so things like, there's organizations like Mental Health First Aid that you can be certified, uh, run through a workshop and be certified on how to deal with mental health or suicidal type. Listen, I've been doing, I've been doing church ministry 15 years. I have no idea how to uh, treat someone that's suicidal other than have you prayed about it like uh, so my my tool belt is is a little weak in that area would love like some organization that, that we'll work with through dcn to kind of help solve that and the third thing that um that i just if if i really talk about this for a long time i'll get upset um the fact that there are not christian recovery organizations that are in this space uh, yo so yes i have been yes. i have been working <laughs> Yeah, John, you can go. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Um, I, I There's a lot of um, frustration that Celebrate Recovery is not in the space. And um, my, my desire is to try to find several. I'm already interviewing several, having those conversations, trying to once again build this think tank where we can come together. Um, but we need to, we need some sort of a, of a solution so that we can provide recovery, so that we can train our people to have those those conversations, um, and so it would, and and you know, Pastor Brock, even Stacy, you all have have some of that because of your other job, you know, you have more more of exposure into this. How do how do we train your volunteers? How do we train John's volunteers? How do we train the person like me that has no exposure but is just interested in that? And, and yeah, basic chaplaincy stuff. That. I've always felt like every single minister, or, or it should be part of a basic discipleship yeah. exposure when someone becomes a believer. That yeah. they that's just the basics, you know, chaplaincy one on one kind of thing, which I believe should not be even called chaplaincy. Like yeah. this is how to care for others. I I had not put that. To, I'm just honest, and and I don't know this space. Like I'm surrounding myself with people that know this space and, and I'm like, hey, let's just apply this to the metaverse. But I had not put it together that that's chaplaincy. Uh, and so that that's a unique spin for me today because I knew it was mental health. I knew it was soul care. I knew it was important, but I hadn't taken into account the 
the chaplaincy is angle. And so maybe I need to understand that better. Yeah, being present, right? Listening mm. more than speaking, just being present. Yes. And that's kind of the thing. Listen for patterns, listen for different words and things like that, where your mind is clicking to certain resources, but still being present in that moment. And that's interesting. Yeah. So really One, like when I'm when I'm talking about like the, the training, and I'm I'm sure chaplaincy training is more exhaustive, but it's more it's like uh, we're, we're we're wanting to train almost to be operating as chaplains in that space like is that is that what we're what what you're suggesting yes yeah, yeah i think yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. in yeah. every ministry space opportunity whatever it is yeah well and that, and that's the funny thing was i'm sorry i'll, I'll shut up in a second mm -hmm. i went off on this in, in a, at a, at a at a meeting with me and, and several senior leaders with new thing and uh, I, I just exploded. Long story short, a, a, a digital pastor, a friend of mine, tried to commit suicide two months ago. And um, I mean, this is not like a casual acquaintance. This is like one of my top five friends. And um, when it, when I finally, after the Baker acting, and when I finally got to her, and I was like, what is going on? And, and, and her response was, Jeff, it was just too dark. And I, I was, because she had been pulled into this digital stuff. And it enveloped her and, and uh, there were other things and it had to work through and, and she's, she's getting treatment, but it was, it was this, we're not, we're not prepared. We're, we're literally, I just did a podcast this week where it's like, we are doing, we're doing ministry in areas where internet addiction is a real thing. So we're doing ministry in areas that are killing us. We're literally going into the, the nuclear thing when it's on fire, trying to pull people out. We're the people that are pulling out of the, the, uh, 9-11 towers while the buildings corrupt crashing down around us and it's like we're not we don't know what we're doing but that doesn't mean we yeah. stop it means we need training right. to try to figure out how to actually do this this thing went yeah. in a completely different direction than what i was thinking of mm. but, well that's but what we do way, chaplains yeah. go in we don't well, run away from it we go in you know first yeah. responders what, we're running when, into when, the when fire I said to, uh, that's so good when i said the new thing i was like i'm doing this like in, in the next couple mm -hmm. months um a new thing was like when you're doing it come do it with us. Like we want to go with you in that. And so we're, we're going to be doing trainings and developing this for, for a global approach. It's interesting. DJ Chong's coming in. I've got a meeting with him like in five minutes on something. Oh, that's why he's coming different, in. But I know he's, he's really, he's really in this space uh, and, and really interested in that. Hey, DJ. Oh, well, he comes on us out. Ran away. <laughs> He'll be back. Um, I'll, I'll text him. Listen, well, thanks. Uh, um, I'm sure you have to go then. That's a, the cue. <laughs> yeah. Are, do you have, Stacy? would you want to talk more about this? I do. I would love okay. to. See, and that's um, why I connect with Chris Caputo because of our, you yeah. know, recovery spaces. And my husband and I have our own digital group, okay. individual ones. So um, Chris is going to be putting together a team on mm. this. Um, I'm, I'm like operating at, at a very high level, trying to network and connect to find some solutions mm -hmm. or at least get people to acknowledge there's a problem and work. <laughs> a solution. You know, it's what, what I was, it was funny. Like I, I, I actually, I was quoted this week at a learning community and it kind of blew up and just was in a learning community where it's like, let's, let's not run away from the opportunity. Let's look at the opportunity as an opportunity and run towards it instead yeah. of running away from it. And, Come uh, on. and so on, in the, what we want to do in the metaverse, we have to acknowledge there's a mental health like that argument, that complaint is valid. Uh, yeah. So let's let's work towards a solution or let's at least pretend it exists and, and work towards it in, instead of running away or being afraid to enter because it's a problem. And uh, we're seeing actually, honestly, it, it it's taking a lot of conver it's a lot of conversation, but finding mm -hmm. people that have that view, they are out there. And mm -hmm. so it's, it's going to be fun putting that together, but Stacy, I'll, I'll reach out to you and, and, and we'll, um, we'll, yeah. we'll double up on that here in, good. in a little Thanks. bit. And, and Pastor, Pastor Brock, like, honestly, just the whole chaplaincy thing, like that's a, mm. uh, that's, that's I've a, honestly, I, that's how I saw it in my head. That's how I've you. always saw it that way. Go ahead, can I give that. you 30 seconds? Can I give you one arrow in your quiver for your Please. pastoral counseling? Someone's in pain. Um, you know, someone says, you know, you know, I'm just, I, I'm up to my head. I, you know, I, my, my dog died last week and, you know, I'm sick and, um, yeah, 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 yeah. you can, if you just paraphrase what they've said, so, so you lost your dog and you're, and you're sick with this disease. What's that like? 
-hmm. Just ask, what's that like? And it, this, this is a deeply biblical thing. Like if you look throughout the Psalms, it talks about incline your ear to me, O Lord, right? Look at Psalm, yeah. um, okay. long, Psalm 17. <laughs> oh God, incline your ear to me, hear my words. Mm -hmm. One of the, and, and, and we heard it actually in the metaverse summit. I was so geeked about it. I can't remember the, the speaker's name. She was talking about the, Maybe. one of the big indicators on if trauma is going to persist or not is the question, did I feel alone in the midst of my trauma? Mm. And, and so when you ask, when you actually hear people, they don't feel alone, they feel heard. And that's just so deeply healing to have somebody that feel, that understands me, that hears me you know, that's, that's to, that's to no longer be alone. That's why the psalmist is saying it to God. So yeah, Mindy's, um, uh, just to be honest, Mindy's the reason I'm getting an amen from Stacy preach. Yeah, she, preach she's I, really I was saying excited. that same thing to you earlier, friend. Yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're going to be yeah. building Mindy's definitely a part of, of this and building and, and she's, it's yeah. Is she your like soul care specialist in your life? I think you mentioned that or something like that. Yeah. Uh, and I, 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 Mindy is the reason I am here. Uh, she is mm -hmm. the first person outside of my circle of influence that had influence in like the church circles that was like, hey, Jeff, you're actually right. And we need to get other people to hear this. And mm -hmm. so she got me the job with Stadia. She got me connected. And then like COVID exploded everything, which was the right place, right time. And, mm -hmm. and uh, but yeah, she has been very influential in my life. And um and, and my one of my go tos on the men, Chris. I mean, Chris is, and that's not to downplay Chris. Chris is working together. I think it's all together piece. But like Mindy, for, if Jeff has a board of directors for him, like my my personal like type people, Mindy is definitely that. And, and yeah, that's another thing we all need, right? We need yeah. our own board of directors. Like, hello, yeah. every one of us on this call, you need to have. I needed to hear that. That literally, <laughs> I can. I name them. I name Jeff. them, and I and they all know each other too. They don't know each other well, but they know of each other because they know they're part of my support. Jeff's been saying this for months for me. I, I oh you know no 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 I have I have Pastor hey, Brock. Pastor Brock. Yeah. I, I'm feeling really convicted. Good. I'm yeah. no, I've got the guy. I've got the guy I want oh, to connect you with. Okay? Perfect. Perfect. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to, do I have your number, your phone number? Yeah. He's a oh, no, guy. maybe I'll, I'll, I'll discord it to you. Yeah. Discord it to me. Yeah. I can, yeah. can't spell discord. Um, but he is, um, he's you, except he does you globally in Latin and South America, Miami, oh, wow. and he leads teams, uh, no place left organist goose. Do you know scuba Steve? Have you ever bumped in with no place left NPL? down here in, in south florida it's fine if not yeah i don't think um, so anyway uh but he is he's or organically uh he's he's unique expressions of church like four people under a palm tree like and, and so like he's you maybe he's not on the orthodoxy side but yeah <laughs> he's, he's, he's your approach but what he's good at is is like the systems and the process yeah and for sure the volunteers and for some sure. of the ministry yeah. and stuff i have and so I mean, I was talking with him and he's, and he's wanting to, honestly, he's wanting to understand metaverse. Yeah. And well, so bro, like, I, I'm, like, I'm stoked. I'm stoked. Yeah. Let's it's do like, it. That's a great to talk to him. You need to learn yes. from him. He needs to learn I love from it. you. And, and I love so, it. I love yeah. it. Text me your phones. Give me your phone I will. number. I'll text yep. you too. And That's like, a deal. that will be a phenomenal, by the way, scuba Steve's on, on my board of directors too. Like I, okay. the, the, there, there, there's, there's there the Holy spirit. I've got four or five um that that so that yeah that. get your board of directors friends yeah, yeah. yes Make that, i think this is the invitation from the father to you today that's right <laughs> i think so i think so i need i need uh, to start uh, i need to leave the pig pen started, all right i need Just to leave the pig it. pen go back to the go back to the mansion of having a board of directors so. <laughs> oh this, this is this has been awesome i've enjoyed this this is the love y'all party yeah of it so hey thanks for the time i'm gonna let you go because thank you guys take care bye, -bye. thanks everybody have a good one god bless